Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Good. I'm great. Let's talk about Gerber Daisy. I just recently did a video potting these guys up, and there were a few questions from that vlog, or just a few comments that I got through. I think it was Twitter. And I thought, well, just go ahead and do a quick video talking about these guys. Ah, Gerber daisies are an herbaceous perennial from the family Esteraceae. Their native range is in Swaziland, which is South Africa. And these will grow for you in zones 8 through 10. Though I don't know why you couldn't go up even higher than that as long as you have cool temperatures for them. These being from South Africa, that tells us something. What does it tell us? Like some of our other plants, like the Bird of Paradise, they like nice warm sunny days and, well, I guess the sun's dependent on the plant, but nice warm days and cooler nighttime temperatures. Now, for me, during the summer, nighttime temperatures are usually in the 70s and 80s, and they seem happy with that. But if you're consistently in the 80s at nighttime and they're always sopping wet, you could have some issues. They're a low-growing plant that prefers full sun to part sun, maybe even part shade, depending on your growing conditions. And where I live, these are typically grown as an annual, though I have on numerous occasions had them come back for me. I'm not sure if that's because of reseeding or what happened with them. It was just a very, very, very warm spot in a mild winter, but typically even the seeds don't really like to be chilled, so I, maybe it was just luck. I don't know. A nice, organically rich, well-draining soil is really all you need for these these guys. For me, because I have kind of like clay soil that doesn't drain super well, I like to pot them up a little bit higher than the soil line. That allows the air to move through because they do like to be evenly moist, but they don't want to be sopping wet. They don't want to sit in water. Does that make sense? Do you know what I'm saying? These would be good container plants, and since they're an annual where I live in zone 6A, 6B, that's what I use them for. They go in pots. These dry fairly quickly. And the flowers vary with all different types of colors with Gerber daisies. There's a Gabera, Gibera daisies, Jibera jamesonii, I believe. This one right here has lovely, gorgeous double flowers. The flower color does kind of shift a little bit with age. Down here you can see this is the same flower, it's just starting to open up. They open up from the center and raise up, up, up. Stand right above the plant. Pollinators love them. I think one of the things I like about them so much is that there's something kind of whimsical and almost cartoon-like about them, like something from Alice in Wonderland. Or they're just cute. As with any plant, you want to go ahead and keep your dead foliage pruned out, particularly from the soil line. Having dead foliage laying the soil line attracts pests and all types of critters to get in here on the plant, so keep that stuff cleaned up. And the Gerber daisies will bloom for you summer through fall, and at least the warmer parts of fall, you know, weather permitting. However, because of that, you want to be sure to go ahead and deadhead them. This will encourage them to keep blooming properly. To deadhead them, just go ahead on down here, way down there into the plant. Once the flower has died, I don't have any to deadhead yet, so we're just gonna pretend. Take your snippers, take your clean snippers, and cut it down as far as you can. Get that stalk out of there. Get the dead one out. That'll help encourage new things. And you want to do this before the flower starts to die away completely, because once it starts to set seed, then it tells the plant you don't need to flower as much. The whole point is to make it think that it needs to keep on flowering. And also, when I pop these guys up, I do make sure to add just a little bit of slow release fertilizer. Anything too strong as far as liquids go, I have noticed that the foliage does end up burning a little bit more easily, so maybe their roots are a little bit more delicate. Speaking of their roots, these have very, very, very deep root systems. So if you live someplace where you may want to plant these in the ground, but then they're not going to survive your winters, it might be a good idea to plant them actually in their pot, in their can, put the whole thing in the ground so that you can go ahead and lift it up and out of the ground in the fall time to bring indoors. This way you don't have to worry about the recovery of the root system from trying to dig it up because they don't necessarily like to have their roots disturbed. Now, however, if you watched my vlog, although I don't know if I, I don't think I covered actually planting them, I just kind of did it and was like, voila. Really had to get into those roots to make them fit into these shallow clam planters and they're responding wonderfully. But after a full season of growth, that's going to be a different story. Troubles, concerns, problems you may have with them. One is root rot and stem rot. These guys, they, like I said, they don't like to be soaking wet. That's why I plant mine up just a little bit to protect them from me because I am a heavy-handed waterer. And those wet, soggy conditions, well, th that is what helps encourage that rot to happen. Uh, as far as pets go, thrifts, white flies, anything that's like attracted to basically a soggy dying plant then that's, that's something you would have to be concerned about. But given more sun, afternoon shade is best. They'll usually be just fine, and that won't be something you have to worry about. And I have noticed, though I haven't really seen much of it listed online, the slugs do seem to enjoy being around mine. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I, my slugs have weird tastes. I don't know. But that's all stuff a little bit of DE powder won't fix, so no big deal. As I mentioned before, you can bring these inside. Just as long as they have enough light and warmth, they'll keep going for you. 
Now, if you're bringing them in in the fall time, they may go ahead and look a little bit scraggly for a while. Sometimes there's just some shock from going from inside to out. With the TLC they need, they'll be okay. Like I said, the key here is to make sure that their soil's evenly moist, but they're not sopping wet. I generally, if they're inside, I let them dry out for a couple days before I soak them, but not if my heat or AC is blazing. The air's gonna be way too dry and the, they'll, they'll dry out. You can see, it's very easy to tell in the foliage on a Gerber Daisy when they need to be watered. Similar to a hibiscus, the leaf will wilt and get limp. Ideally, you want to water them before that happens, but if you see them starting to limp up, go ahead and give them a gentle drink and they should pop right back up. Another wonderful thing here with the Gerber daisies, they're fairly easy to propagate from seed. It takes about six to eight weeks. So what that means is about six to eight weeks before your last frost date, you wanna go ahead and get those seeds germinated. I just scatter on top of my soil. I don't really even bury them. When I water them in, they tend to go in a little bit and then they'll pop up and do their thing. I don't chill these seeds though. They. I don't have good results when I chill them. So planning and preparation is of importance here. What I mean by that is that in the fall time when I know that these are getting ready to go downhill, that's when I stop deadheading them. And I'll go ahead and I'll let them go to seed and I'll just pop the top of the flower off and I'll put it in like a wax bag or something like that to help preserve the seeds for a while. Even better, what you should do is let those seeds dry and then store them. Sometimes I'm just forgetful. Fall's very busy around here. Okay, that's all. Quick overview of the Gerber Daisy. Simple rundown, what to do to take care of them. Comment down below. Let me know what you got going on with your Gerber Daisies. Or just say hi. I love talking to y'all. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It helps the video so, so much and I appreciate every single one of them. Subscribe as well. Upload multiple times a week. I will link my social media stuff down below, down there in the roots of the video and follow me i'll follow you back all right and as always everybody keep on growing Bye -bye.